Welcome to lesson three of this module. In this lesson, we are going to be learning how to define user journeys. If in the previous lesson we were discussing what is or what are user journeys and why are they important in the requirements gathering phase of the report design process, in this lesson we are getting practical. I will be showing you the steps that you need to take in order to build a user journey for your reporting solution. As a reminder from the previous lesson, a user journey always has a starting point and a destination. When applied to reporting, the user journey starting point will be the report itself, which is the first point of interaction that your user is going to have with your solution. And the destination in this case will be the actions or decisions that they take based on whatever insights your report is giving them. But what are the steps that you need to take to properly define user journeys? Well, the good news is there are only two steps. Yes, two steps. And one of the steps, we did it already during the first phase of the requirements gathering process. So the first step is defining the user journey scope. And like I said, to define the user journey scope, most of the information that you will use, you should have collected all of that information already during the first phase of the requirements gathering. Things like the business goal, the report type, the personas, they will all be part of the user journey scope. But again, the good news is we should have all that information available to us already. And the second step is, of course, mapping the user journey itself. For this step, I'm going to show you some of the tools that you have available today to help you on this and that I think are very useful for this kind of scenarios. But first, I want to make some changes to the journey itself. So before we discussed that the starting point of any user journey is the report itself and then the destination is either the decision or an action. However, I want to shake things a little bit we will be changing the starting point. And the reason is that it is quite generic quite right now, right? So let's think about this for a second. So what is your starting point? To make it easier to figure that out, think about why are you building this report in the first place? What is the report main goal? Or in this case, what is the business goal with that report? Because in a way, the business goal for that report represents the report itself. And the report itself is your starting point. <laughs> I know it's a bit confusing, but the main idea to retain here is that your user journey in reality starts with the business goals. You need to make sure that those business goals are achieved and that you provide enough insights and information to your end users so that they can take actions to meet those business goals. Now let's talk a little bit more about what each of these user journey steps actually entail. To define the user journey scope, the things that we will be needing are the business goals, the actions, the user personas, and the report type. And for step two, we will be using something called mind maps uh, that are multiple tools that will allow you to create a mind map. And I will show you a couple of those tools, but for now let's focus on the first step, which is the user journey scope. So where do we get those business goals, actions, personas, and report types for our, for our user journey scope? Spoiler alert, I've said this already, but we do have all this information available already through the first stage of the requirements gathering process. But we need to go back to our first phase of that process to understand exactly where all of this information is coming from. Let's first analyze the business goals and the actions. So do you remember when we were discussing how to understand business goals and pain points a couple of uh, modules before? Well, this is exactly where we are going to get this information for the user journeys. As you can see here, the first two questions are related to the company overview, which also is information valuable when you're defining user journeys, of course. But the second question that we have on this page is related to the problem statement, where we ask things like, describe me the business need or problem that this report is trying to address. What kind of decisions will you take based on this report? And what kind of actions will it drive? Or what kind of actions will you take? So previously, we asked our stakeholders, why did they decide to build this report in the, in the first place? 
why do they want to see X, Y and Z business metrics and what kind of actions are they planning to take from this report or what kind of decisions will this report help the business make. And this is one of the answers that we will be using to help us define our user journeys. The second one is the fourth question. That's a bit confusing, <laughs> which is about describing the impact on the business that the fulfillment of this request or this reporting request must have for it to be considered a success. So in other words, this is what we will end up with. With the answers from those two questions, we will be able to understand what are the goals of the business and what actions does the business need to take or to drive to achieve those goals. In the requirements gathering framework or user journeys framework, we will be looking into a little bit more detail in to, or we will be looking into this process into a little bit more detail. And also uh, we will have a look at the right questions that it should be asking. And we've done, we've done that in the previous module actually. So stay tuned for the next lesson because I will be talking about this too for the user journeys framework. And so now, that we know what our what are our business goals and actions or decisions that the business needs to take to achieve those goals it's time for us to an, to analyze what is the persona type for this report and what is the report type that will match that persona or those personas and as with the previous example i'm going to say the exact same thing which is we already know the answer to this and the answer is somewhere in the first stage of the requirements gathering process. And remember when we talked about the audience and the report type? Remember this slide? Well, this is exactly what we will be using to define our user journey scope. And this one should be fairly straightforward. You should know exactly the type of persona that this um, report is going to be or the type of persona that is going to be using your report and with that you know automatically in a way the type of report that you should be building once again you can have the executive type of persona analyst operational or a more general type of persona and to match these type of personas with the right dashboards you have like the dashboard type of report analytical operational and so on also, if you remember, the granularity grows when you go from a dashboard type of report to an analytical type of report and to an, or to an operational type of, of report. So a dashboard will be way less granular and it will have like a high level view of the main metrics. For an analytical type of report, you will need to worry a little bit more about the interactivity aspect of that report. And then we have the operational report, which will be a report that is very granular and that has a lot of detail about a particular part of the business. So to summarize, we have all this information already. Isn't that amazing? Now it's finally time to start mapping out our user journeys. To map my user journey, I usually use a tool called Miro. This tool allows you to create kind of those mind maps and I will show you in a demo what this tool exactly is and how you can sign up for it and a few other details around how to use it or how to build user journeys for your Power BI reporting solutions. But before that, I just want to talk about a little bit about why are we mapping this user journey for your report. So remember what we discussed before, the starting point for any user is the point when they open the report, you're tired of listening to this by now already, and the destination is either making a business decision or taking or driving some kind of action based on whatever insights the user is consuming with your report. We need to figure out now what is the journey that this user is going to take from the moment they open your report. When a user opens a report, there are probably a few KPIs or a few main figures that they will look at. And this will be your starting points. What we will do in the user journey definition is keep asking the user, what are you going to do next, basically. But let's try to do this exercise with a little example. Imagine again that this, like, let's imagine the sales example that I mentioned before. And imagine that we know the scope because we've done the first stage of the requirements gathering. So we know so we know that the business goal for this report or the main business goal for this report is to track sales against target and the actions that we probably will take or that this report will probably drive 
is to define an action plan for stores and products with low sales. The kind of persona that is going to be looking at this report is an analyst and so the report type is an analytical type of report basically basically because we have that type of persona so we've done our homework cool so the way i usually do this is i start with the business goal which in this case is making sure that the sales are on target one of the first things i do is to open a tool like miro and just add a big sticky note at the left side of the screen and this sticky note will have like in a very high level the business goal for this report then on the other side of the screen i just add more sticky notes with the decisions and actions that users will probably do or take based on this goal if it's being achieved or not and of course how do the users know that this goal is being achieved? Well, our report should be telling them exactly that. So what is it left to do? Well, everything in between. One of the first things I ask my stakeholders or end users in the user journey session is, that is a business goal. In this case, making sure sales are on target. What is the first thing or the first visual, the first KPI, the first figure that you would look at when you open your Power BI report? If there was a reporting solution already in place, this should make your life a lot easier. Open that old reporting solution and ask your user to just play with it. And ask your stakeholder or user to just say out loud what is he or she thinking about. Why does it look at certain parts of that report or certain figures? Try to understand where are the decision points, like which figures are like the decision points, basically, uh, where the user decides, I want to explore this further, or I'm going with what I have here right now and I'm happy with it. So the secret here, if you don't have that existing reporting solution, is to keep asking, what are you going to do next until you reach a point where the user will say, there is nothing, there is nothing else for me to analyze in this report. I got the answers I needed with the data that I have available and I can now go on with my business and make my decisions. I know this is kind of an ideal scenario and most of the times you will never be able to answer every single question that your users will throw your way, but at least you should aim to answer as many business questions as possible. Also, if you are asking yourselves, okay, but in this user journey session, like who should be in that session? I think it depends. If you have, let's say, if you're very lucky and you only have one type of persona, very, very lucky, that is going to be using your reports, then I would aim to have at least two or three people so that I can gather different points of view, basically. If you have multiple personas, I would still have at least a couple of people representing each type of persona so that I can gather those different types of views. And unfortunately, most of the times people just don't agree with, in what they want to see, which doesn't make any sense because I think, again, every reporting solution should be mapped in a way, to a business goal. So if you want to see different things and we are in the same team, then we have different business goals. I mean, maybe that happens, but I don't know about it. That sounds a little bit funky to me. And I know I had this question before, what if I have a hundred people looking at my report, five different personas? I don't know, like a lot of people looking at your report. I'm sorry to break it to you, but you will never be able to please everyone. Not in Power BI, not in life, not anywhere or at anything, <laughs> I'm afraid. And yes, sad, tragic, but that's life and you need to go on and know that that happens. If you fall into the trap of trying to please everyone, you will never finish that report, especially if you have a hundred people looking at it with different points of view. So gather a group of people that you think best represents that persona and work on your end user journeys and your requirements gathering with them. 